Hello everyone, my name's Heather Ford and I'm the primary English leader here at WEC. Today I'm going to be sharing some spelling tips and tricks to help you get spelling right, right, right with your child at home. Feel free to pause the video at any moment. A quick task for you, pause the video here and have a go at reading this passage. That's right, even if letters and a word are jumbled, as long as the first and last are the same, our brain can still read it. Magical, hey? We'll be learning more about this strategy later on in the slides. Now, our aims and objectives for parents and for children are quite self-explanatory. So, we want to share with you how spelling is taught in school and to give you practical ideas on how to support your child in their spelling. For children, we want to give every single child a range of spelling strategies, including phonics, to help them attempt to spell unfamiliar words. We want to ensure they can spell the most common high frequency words correctly and ultimately building their confidence in spelling and writing. Now, what makes spelling in English so challenging? Well, the English language is a largely phon phonetic language. It's got 26 letters of the alphabet, 44 sounds or phonemes, it's combinations of letters that can be put together to make a different sound, 19 vowel sounds and 25 consonant sounds. These sounds can be presented by more than one letter. For example, in shop, the sh, one sound can be represented in a variety of different ways. For example, shop, chef, sugar and tissue. These are all exactly the same sound, but they have different spellings. So one spelling can represent a variety of different sounds. For example, in moon and book, that double O sound in the middle is completely different in both words. I take it you already know of tough and bow and cough and dough. Others may stumble, but not you, on hiccough, thorough, tough and through. Well done, and now you wish, perhaps, to learn of less familiar traps. Beware of heard, a dreadful word, that looks like beard and sounds like bird. And dead, it's said like bed, not bead. For goodness sake, don't call it bead. Watch out for meat and great and threat. They rhyme with sweet and straight and bet. A moth is not a moth in a moth in mother, nor both in bother, broth in brother. And here is not a match for there, nor dear and fear for bear and pear. And then there's dose and rose and lose. Just look them up and goose and choose. And cork and work and card and ward and font and front and word and sword. And do and go and fought and cart. Come, come, I've hardly made a start. A dreadful language, man alive, I'd mastered it when I was five. This poem is a prime example of how the English language is a complex one, and it's largely based on visual cues. Now, research has suggested that good spellers are the more attentive readers. They see the text as a source of learning about vocabulary and spelling, and they create links and see patterns between words. Whereas a poor speller has a poor visual memory and doesn't form these analogies between words which can help them spell. Now, ultimately, we need to teach them strategies for correct spelling, which would be far more important than giving them the correct spelling of a word. We know that spelling involves the integration of several skills which include knowledge of phonological representations, grammatical and semantic knowledge, as well as the formulation of analogies with words in visual mem memory and the knowledge of orthographic rules and conventions. So mostly we will be looking at patterns and the visual memory. To support our children, we also need to be aware of the mental processes involved. So we need to be able to say the word we need to visually be able to recognize that word. We need to have that feeling of correctness and we also need to have the correct spelling. In FS and Key Stage 1 at WEC, all of our spellings are based around the phonics program. Mrs Finn will be there to tell you more about that at a later stage. 
But initially we have the we teach the letter and sound correspondences. Segmenting of words, which is splitting words into the smallest sounds and phonemes to spell and irregular and high frequency words, or you may have heard of these as red words, for example, the and people. These don't follow a particular pattern or rule and just need to be learnt. You may have seen the Read Write Ink Phonics Speed Sounds chart, which shows the stretchy consonants and the bouncy consonants along with the vowels. And in each common, in each column, you have the different spelling rules for the same sound. We encourage our children to investigate by finding a pattern or a rule, and we also discuss the most common spelling. As you can see from the chart over here, we've got all the spelling sounds, and then we've written down the spellings that go with them. Now, in order to practice, we could stretch those sounds. We could count how many phonemes, that's how many units of sound there are in the word. We could write it down in multiple ways. We might identify the sound buttons, such as the sh, a, p shape. And we will read and check our work. Some other common strategies are using the pattern or the rule and writing that spelling down using all of those patterns. For example, way, way, way and way. We would likely remember through our visual clue that way, this version of way is the correct spelling. In key stage two, we use exactly the same model. We encourage investigating, practicing and applying with more focus on adding prefixes and suffixes. For example, adding the un or re prefixes to a root word or the ly, full and ed suffixes to a root word. We also look at different letter strings. For example, shun can be presented as t-i-o-n in station, double s-i-o-n in passion and c-i-a-n in magician. So again, coming back to those different strategies, looking at the meaning, the patterns and the visual memory, and then giving a sense of probability. Over here, you can see that for the one word hope, we can make all of these different connections between the word. Just to pick out a few, by adding a suffix, we can change the meaning of the word. So hope could become hopeful or hopefully or unhopeful. We could change the tense. We could change it into a continuous verb by dropping the E and adding ING, or we could change it into the past tense by adding ED. Now, children in Key Stage 2 are encouraged to write sentences or paragraphs using these words and linking the words from their spelling words together. For example, it's good to have a bright light at night or your eyesight might not be right. There are three different types of spelling strategies which encourage metacognitive thinking. Now, your child may have a preference for either visual, auditory or kinesthetic. Now we're going to talk about some strategies that you can use at home to help your children learn those words that they find tricky. Talk to your child about how they think they learn best. Some visual strategies include finding words that look the same. How many can you write down? Using sticky notes and placing them in suitable places around the room at eye level, particularly for those words that your children are struggling with so that they can see them, for example, when they brush their teeth and just increasing the amount of exposure to those tricky words. You could study the word underline the difficult part and say the word carefully, particularly if there's part of the spelling where children just can't get it right. We can search for small words inside a word. For example, in about, I can find the words a, out and bout. In teacher, I can find t, each, her and ache. It's about making those connections. 
I could concentrate on pyramid writing. So write your word in the shape of a pyramid by adding one extra letter each time until the word is complete. I could make random words with letters by putting a selection of letters in an arc and see how many words you can make from the letters. Or, as referred to previously, I could muddle up the letters to make sure I'm always starting and finishing with the original letter and then get other pupils or get people to correct them. Now, if I'm an auditory learner, I prefer listening to things and I react better to hearing things. Now, if your child's struggling to remember a spelling, you could encourage them to create a mnemonic and that's making up a story to help spell a word. So, for example, if your child was struggling to spell sad, you could get them to make up a story to help them remember Sally ate dumplings. You could say it's silly. Now, this one is my personal favourite, as I remember not ever being able to spell this word until my friend at primary school said to me one day, that's silly. All you need to do is break it up. And I say bus, e, ness. And ever since then, I've always been able to spell it. And that's exactly what I think of every time I spell business. You may get your child to record their own voice on their iPad. Now, finally, if they prefer moving things around and creating things, you might find some things around the home that they can do this with. You might encourage them to look at the word, say, cover, write and check. You could get them to build the word or write the word in sand or using different materials such as paint, clay and paper. You could create a jigsaw for your child to put those words together. You may even encourage a lucky dip style where you put some letters in a sack and they pull them out and create different words. Or they may just like to write the word out a couple of times so that they can transfer that spelling into their muscle memory. So how can you help at home? If you can support children with strategies that help your child learn best, then they will be more successful in their spelling. So obviously discuss the words with them. Help children identify what, word, what part of the word they can spell, because we can almost always spell some letters and celebrate success. Help children identify which parts they find tricky. Why discuss why they find particular letters harder. It might be because they're writing them in the wrong order or that they miss out a letter or add in extra letters. And then finally, come up with strategies together to help them remember these specific tricky letters. You can refer back to the earlier slides in the video for any other ideas. Some questions you might ask to help support them. Which part of the word can you spell? What part of the word do you find trickiest and why? What is the common mistake you made? Now, remember, English is not a tricky language, but you can help your child succeed at home. Now, if you need any more information or would like some useful websites and recommended apps, we've got a free website here, Spelling Frame. Some of your children may already be used to Spelling City or Nessie or Phonics Play. And then there are some free and paid um, downloadable apps here. Additionally, if you need any more help and support, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.